you did it. Have you got your time? 17.23. I'll take that. Oh. <laughs> Who wants to watch me turn myself inside out running a really hard 5k trying to run as fast as I can? I yeah. will. I thought you might. And I'm doing it today, but for a very good reason, but it is going to be interesting to see where I'm at as well. So let's just agree that even though it doesn't look like it because I'm in Thailand, the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into winter and there's a lot of things that you need to consider before you really go into winter training, like where are you currently at, what are your correct heart rate zones. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Although I'm going to go horrendously hard, I'm going to calculate my heart rate zones or recalculate them to make sure I've got them right before I head into my winter. Oh yeah, this is already a silly idea, it is hot. But it also is an appropriate time to tell you about the winter training plans that Mary and I have launched. Uh, we're training for Boston, but we've written three plans that are follow along, lots of interactivity for anyone to sign up for within the month of December 2023. So if you're watching this at a different time, then sign up on our website because there will be other ones coming for autumn marathons and eventually half marathons. So we're really excited about that. And that doesn't actually help me today deal with what's about to happen, but hopefully it helps you deal with winter training a little bit better. I really don't feel prepared. This is a silly idea. So I've had, I had confirmation from two mathematics teachers that I have to run 83 seconds per lap in order to get near my PB, which is 17.15. So I'm going to start over there because that is the 200 meter start line and it's 12 and a half laps if you're doing 5K. So that has to be 41, 42 seconds-ish. And as stupid as this seems, and it is stupid by the way, there is really good reason behind it. As I say, I really wanna get my heart rate zones dialed in. I wanna know where I'm at right now after the New York Marathon, but I need to know that I'm really making sure that my winter training is completely focused and I'm, I'm training in the right places at the right times and unfortunately one of the only ways to really know your heart rate zones properly and your training zones doing something like this okay it all starts here 41 second first lap yeah first half okay are we ready you ready three three two one oh okay thank you all right We've got to go nice and easy. Okay, Mikey trackside, here comes Benny on his first 200 meters, looking to hit 41, he's hit 39. So he's gone off a little bit too fast. This is exactly very exciting. <laughs> Okay, he's two and a half laps in. It looks like he's ahead of time for his current PB, but it looks hard already. So we'll see how he fares over the next 10 laps. Okay, here we go, that's three. Again, two seconds ahead. Overall. Okay, so Ben is onto his third lap now. We're going Mikey Cam on the bike. Can't keep up with him actually. He's really warmed up, he's only 7.30 in the morning here, but it's hot. He's absolutely flying though. Come on, Benny. Looking really strong. Focus. Okay, I'm trying to do a lot of maths in my head here to keep Benny on track. I think he's on the sixth lap. Just slowing a little bit. I can see it's hurting now. Okay, he's about halfway. I actually have no idea of the time because our friends are here and Mikey's on the stopwatch. He's following him on the bike. So I don't know how he's doing. He's looking pretty good. He looks like he's got a good rhythm. Um, come on, Benny. You got seven minutes in the Hurt Locker. Come on. I'm sorry. I think I just said Hurt Locker. I never say things like that. Keep my distance now because I've lost track of all the numbers and I 
I don't know whether he's behind or on track, so I'm gonna just hang back. Okay, Benny, that's the bell. Last lap, girls, can we have the bell, please? You push here, Benny, you're looking at around 1720. Go on. Last 200, buddy. 100 to go. No, no. Oh, maybe. Well done. You did it. Have you got your time? 17.23. I would take that. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That would have been nice. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Benny. 17.24, which actually I'm delighted with because I haven't done any speed work for... I mean, actually months, I'm just about to start my speed work, but now with that information that I've got from the 5K, I'm gonna be able to dig right in and make sure I'm training my easy runs in the easy place and my fast runs in exactly the right place. So as much as no, it wasn't a PB, I didn't expect one, but it's certainly some really good data to move forward into the winter. Well, that was actually the hard part, obviously. Now the easy part is that we go home and I show you how to calculate your heart rate zones accurately so you can dial in your winter training. And this bit's the, the easy bit, the fun bit, <laughs> the data bit. One thing I will say before you get the data is you probably noticed that I just did that 5K on a flat track because the key to this whole thing to make sure you get good data is make sure that you're on a flat track because if you're running up or down or on an undulating course, your heart rate isn't stable. It doesn't gradually rise like you need. I mean, it's pretty logical to think about it in the sense of if you're running downhill you can't actually push hard enough to get your heart rate to max for the most part so and what we're looking for is what is your kind of threshold of working heart rate so number one criteria is make sure your effort is on a flat course now as grim as that was this little beauty is going to give me all the data that i need to go into winter and i'm very thankful for that so i'm going to talk you through the process i'm now going to go through and it's really really simple so that i can get my heart rate zones nailed on correct and then i'm going to tell you why that's actually important because you know you might be wondering why you even need heart rate zones at all so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my phone and whatever app I use to get my data from the run, I'm gonna retrieve that and then I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna show you the data on the laptop rather than via my phone because it just fits nicer on the screen. And I'm gonna show you the info on Strava because I think most people use it, but equally I could use Garmin, I could use Training Peaks, I could use Connect Stats, so many ways of doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the data from the run and then very easily, I'm just gonna take the average heart rate from the last three kilometers of that effort and I'm gonna add them together and I'm gonna divide them by three. In this case, it was 185, 190, and 192 beats per minute for those kilometers. Add them together, divide them by three, and you get 189. This is the number, and this is the next bit. You get your laptop out from wherever you put it, or you can do this on your phone still, but um, again, I wanna show you it on the laptop. That's right. I then go on Joe Friel's heart rate calculator. I'm gonna share the link in the description in this video. And I literally just put in that number 189 and it will give me my heart rate training zones. It's that easy. So I now know what are my aerobic zones, what's the top of my aerobic zone. I know what my tempo zones are and I know where my threshold is. And that means I'm gonna dial in perfectly over winter. We're essentially finding out my threshold heart rate, as in roughly the heart rate that my body can work at for about 40 minutes to an hour. But with that data, we can work out all other zones. But how does it actually work in practice? Well, the reason that we do it is easy, because now I know on this base session, exactly where I need to be and I stay there so that I'm definitely working my aerobic base. But also if I want a session to be punchy, then I know where my heart rate needs to be for that. And I know where it needs to be for tempo sessions as well. So I'm squeezing the juice out of every single session. So just remember, training with heart rate is not just for Christmas, it's for life. 
Life nice and cheesy. And if you liked watching me destroy myself just for your enjoyment, then maybe you should consider subscribing to the channel. I don't know, maybe, maybe you should, but that's, you know, I'll leave that to you. But if you liked the video, then you're probably gonna like this one as well, which is one of the OG videos from the channel, which is the nine hard truths of being a runner. I think there's something in there for everyone to learn. Some of it might be a bit eye-opening. Hope you enjoy. See you on Sunday.